Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Carmen, and I'd like to welcome you to my series of videos regarding basic circuit analysis. These videos will be geared towards college students, electronics hobbyists, or anyone who would like to gain a better understanding of circuit analysis. Lecture 1 will be definitions of voltage, current, and power. We'll start off with a general description of what a circuit is, and then move on to a qualitative analysis of voltage and current using the water analogy. We'll then move into a quantitative analysis uh, using mathematical and physical properties in order to accurately describe exactly what voltage and current and power are. So let's begin by talking about what a circuit is. So a circuit is useful to us because it is a mathematical model of an electrical system. So there are equations called Maxwell's equations which will completely describe any sort of electrical system. Uh, but this, these are often very difficult to work with and provide information that is not necessary for us. So in order to simplify the calculation, we use circuit analysis. And whenever we're doing circuit analysis, the things that we mainly care about are voltage, current, and power. So let's start off with a qualitative discussion using the water analogy. Now the water analogy allows us to gain an intuitive understanding of what voltage and current are and how they're related, as well as uh, lets us kind of see what's going on inside of an electrical system. And it, it lets us equate uh, water in a pipe to charge in a wire. So let us imagine that there's a pipe. And in this pipe, there's water. Now, if there's no pressure on either side of the pipe, then water will not flow because it doesn't have any driving force behind it. The water will not flow unless something acts upon it. Now, if we, for example, have a one atmosphere pressure on the left side and no pressure on the right side, then the water will flow from left to right because it wants to go to a place that has the least amount of pressure. Conversely, if we have one atmosphere on the right and no pressure on the left, then water will flow in the opposite direction. Now, if we, for example, have one atmosphere on the left and one atmosphere on the right, then water will not flow. And this is because it has to have a pressure difference in order for water to flow. Because in this case, we have the same force acting on both sides, and that's going to mean that the water does not move because the net force on it is zero. Okay, now in the electrical case, we can say that voltage is the driving force which creates a current, and current is just the water moving. It's equivalent to the water moving. So current is actually moving charge, and it's a measure of how much charge is moving and how fast it is moving, whereas voltage is a measure of the force or pressure that's applied on this charge, which causes it to move. So now let us look at just an electrical wire. So instead of a pipe in an electrical system, we would have just a wire. Now on this wire, we will have a voltage on either side. So let's say, for example, we have zero volts on the left and zero volts on the right. Now, since there is none of that driving force which is going to cause charge to move, charge will not move. So there will be no current to the right and no current to the left. Now, let's erase this. And if we change it to where there is now one volt on the left and zero volts on the right, current will flow from left to right. That's because current wants to go to a place of the lowest voltage. So current will always flow from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Now, similarly to the water analogy, if we have the same voltage on both sides, let's use the color black there, if we have the same voltage on both sides, current will not flow because there has to be a difference in order for current to flow. So since there's one volt on the left and one volt on the right, there's no path that the current can take in order to go to a lesser voltage. So current will not flow. Current will, the charges will essentially stay still as in the water analogy. So hopefully that gave you a good intuitive understanding of voltage and current, and we will be talking about this in a more quantitative perspective here, but uh, hopefully this at least gives you an idea of how we can equate voltage and current to something that we can easily visualize, which is water in a pipe. So now let's talk some more about voltage. So voltage is described as the energy per unit charge. So this essentially means if we have a certain amount of charge stored, or a certain amount of charge, how much energy does that charge hold? And that's that's what voltage is. So like we said, it's, it can be thought of as the driving force behind current. So it is the, um, 
It's also called the electric potential. So you can think of it as the potential energy in a circuit. So if there is a closed circuit, then if you have that potential energy stored, it will start to flow and it will turn into electric energy. So the unit for voltage is the volt. And we can also just use a capital V. And this is going to be joules per coulomb. All right, so energy is in joules and it's per unit charge and charges in coulombs. So it's joules per coulomb. And this is also dW over dQ. So this says if we change the charge, how much does the energy change? All right, and lastly, in the equations, we're going to be using little v to represent voltage. So the way that I remember it is, like I said, it's the driving voltage behind, or it's the driving force behind a current. So if you don't have any voltage difference, then there's not going to be any current. Because like we said, you have to have that difference in order for a current to flow. So if there isn't that difference in force, then current will not flow. Now, one thing about voltage that you need to know is that it does have a polarity. So if we just look at a black box, so we don't know what this is, but we know that it has a voltage across it from plus to minus of one volt. Okay, so we know, we know this. Now, if we look at the same black box under the same conditions, and we look at it instead from plus to minus, so if we invert the polarity, what's going to happen to the value of the voltage? Well, remember, voltage says that from this point, let's use red, from this point to this point, okay, from th that point to that point, the voltage drops by one volt. So now, this time we're saying from this point to this point, how does the voltage change? And the voltage actually rises, so the sign is going to be opposite, so we have a minus one volt there. Okay, so it's important to note that whenever all the conditions are the same, if you flip the polarity, like we did here, if you flip this polarity, then the sign will change. Okay, and you'll also hear me say voltage drop or voltage rise a lot. So if I say voltage drop, that means that the value is positive. And if I say voltage rise, that means value is negative, as we saw in the example on the right. So now let's move on to current. So current is describing the actual flow of charge. So current is the resulting flow of charge that comes from a voltage. So let's say it describes the movement of charge. Okay, so we the current is saying how many how much charge is moved per unit time. So the unit for current is the amp. We can also use a capital A for that. And since we're doing charge per time, it's going to be coulombs per second. Okay, and this is also dQ over dt. So this is saying if a certain amount of time has passed. So if, for example, say one second has passed, how much charge is moved? And that's what that's what current is describing. Okay, and in in our equations, we're going to be using a little i for current. So Similarly to voltage, current does have a polarity, so let's say that we have a wire again. If we want to know the current flowing in this direction, say it's 1 amp. So we can say that the current flowing from left to right is 1 amp. Now, if we remember that value of 1 amp flowing from left to right, if we instead draw the arrow this way, and we say we want to know the current that's flowing from right to left, well, we can just say it's negative 1 amps. Okay, so again, flipping the direction or flipping the polarity of the current changes the sign. So a uh, current flowing from right to left of negative 1 amp is the exact same thing as a current flowing from left to right of 1 amp. Okay, so it's, it's important to know that flipping that arrow or flipping the way that the arrow points will change the value of the current and it will change it by changing the sign. Okay, so now we can move on to power. So power is going to be describing the energy change, or the energy change, yes, per unit time. The unit for power is the watt, W-A-T-T. We can also just use a capital W for that. And since it's energy change per unit time, it's going to be joules per second. So this is saying how much energy in joules is lost per second. We can also write it as dW over 
dt. And then in order to denote it in our equations, we're going to be using capital P. Okay, so one important, the way that we figure out power is that we say power is equal to the voltage times the current. Okay, and I know you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do we get this value? Did he just pull that out of thin air? Well, I didn't. And we can prove that this is the case because if we substitute in the value for voltage, which is dW over dQ, the value for current, which is dQ over dT, we can cancel out the dQ, which since it's on the top and bottom, and we are left with dW over dT. And that's what we get here. So this proves that power is voltage times current. Now, power, like I said, all it's describing is the energy change per unit time. But what's important to note is the signs for both of these. So let's say that we have a black box again. And let's say that the voltage from this point to this point is 10 volts, let's say, and that there is a current going in this direction of 1 amp. Okay, so, well, let, let's change this. At first, let's say there is a current in this direction of 1 amp. So, one thing to note is that we need, whenever we're plugging into the power equation, V times I, we need to know the voltage that is in the direction of the current. Okay, so if we say power is equal to, let's make a parenthesis for voltage and a parenthesis for current. Let's keep current positive, so let's say one amp. So we need the current going from top to bottom. And since we're going from plus to minus here, so we're starting at plus at the top and going to minus at the bottom, the, or the voltage is going to be positive. So it'll be 10 volts in here. And the output will be 10 watts. Okay, so let's say, let's call this, well, let's, let's call that case A. Now let's change it up. Now let's say that the current is going from bottom to top and it has a value of 1 amp. Okay, so let's use a different color to separate the two. Let's make a box for voltage and a box for current. So current, we're just going to keep it positive again, so let's have 1 amp. Okay, now this time the voltage is going from negative to positive in this direction. Okay, and remember we said that we need it from positive to negative. So in order to make this line up, what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this voltage a little bit. We are going to instead say, let's make it line up. So we flip the polarity. And from last time we said, if we flip the polarity, we have to change the sign. So now it's minus 10 volts. So now we're saying the voltage change from here to here is minus 10 volts. So instead we will plug in here, minus 10 volts, one amp, and that will give us a value of minus 10 watts. Okay, so what's important to note is that, oops, what's important to note in these two cases is that there is a positive and a negative. And what a positive value means, so positive power, that means power is dissipated, right? Because if we have a voltage drop, so let, let's switch it back to how it was. We have a voltage drop of 10 volts, okay? A voltage drop of 10 volts, and then the current will be flowing from top to bottom. Then that means that this is going to be dissipating power. Now, if we go back to the other value, which is a negative value, or let's, let's keep the same negative power, then that's going to mean power is supplied. So if you think of it like a battery, right, if, if we think of it like a battery, let's say that this is just a 10 volt battery, it is going to be providing current from its positive to its negative, right? So, so you know that current flows from positive to negative in a battery. It's going to start from the positive and end up at the negative. Then you can think, okay, if it is in this case, then it's going to be supplying power and it's going to give us a negative value for the power. So that's important to note that if you have a negative power value, then that means that power is being supplied, whereas if power is positive, that means it's being dissipated. And that's going to be important later on whenever we're sanity checking our numbers to make sure that we're doing things correctly. 
Okay, so this will wrap up the this will wrap up this video, and then in the next videos we're going to be looking at Ohm's law, which describes how voltage and current are related, and and this is a very important video because uh, that's going to be the foundation upon which everything in this series of videos is uh, it is derived. So it's very important that we understand these next few videos and that we gain a good understanding of this. That way, whenever we're doing the more complicated problems later on, we will be able to fly through it no problem and understand Ohm's law and understand what voltage and current are. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. That way I can, uh, that way I can make the videos better in the future. Uh, this is my first time doing this, so I really do appreciate any feedback that I can possibly get in order to make these videos more informative or more topical. So uh, thank you for making it to the end of the video, and I hope to see you at the rest of them.